Katie and Kyrie. How is this all going to play out? We know they are at an impasse with Kyrie's contract situation, which basically this is what's happening. He has to make a decision on a player option by Wednesday. He can opt out and be a free agent. He can opt in for $36.5 million a year, or they negotiate five years, $245 million, or a sign-in trade. Now, KD is obviously the key piece of this organization and team. He's the guy. But he has said he wants no part of this negotiation. It's reported that they haven't spoke, KD and the front office, all offseason. He said this on his podcast. There's no involvement at all. I mean, I can't be involved with this is this man's livelihood. This is much bigger than me. Being a free agent is one of the most important times in your career. I don't think he can even make a decision on opting out until the 29th, I think, which is true. So I kind of just let things play out and see what happens. So. I agree with him. I would want no part of anything that's going on with Kyrie and the Brooklyn Nets ownership or front office is if I'm Kevin Durant for multiple reasons. One, I genuinely think he doesn't want to be involved in other people's money decisions, which is smart. You, you shouldn't. It can get very messy. Your influence can make people make decisions that they end up resenting and resent you for. So it's smart for him to stay out of it when it comes to that. I also wouldn't want to be associated with any kind of decision that Kyrie makes if I'm Kevin Durant. I understand that they're friends, but Kyrie does his own thing. And in lots of ways that could come and backfire on you if it's very public that you were involved in swaying him one way or the other. The other element, which is kind of tied to that, is... A big part of KD's legacy, a big part of the conversation around Kevin Durant is that he has changed teams and he's assembled with other players and he's teamed up and it's not fair and wah, wah, wah. I don't care about any of it. I have no problem with how Kevin Durant has handled his career so far. I wouldn't have left Golden State, but I totally understand why he did. And I respect his decisions as an adult who has won championships and has been a finals MVP multiple times and a league MVP. He's earned the right to make his own decisions about his career. However, some people do feel like that is attached to his legacy. So staying out of the Kyrie negotiation with the Brooklyn Nets, at least publicly, I think is a very smart move for Kevin Durant. I think Kyrie ends up staying in Brooklyn for multiple reasons, money being one of them. But also, it seems very clear now, the reports are more consistent, that if Kyrie does end up leaving Brooklyn, that they will probably lose Kevin Durant as well. So it's in the best interest of the Brooklyn Nets to keep Kyrie if it means keeping Kevin Durant. Because what you can't do after blowing everything up, after losing all of your draft picks, after putting together, assembling this team that played 16 games together in Kyrie Irving, James Harden, and Kevin Durant, you lost James Harden. If you lose Kyrie and KD, where does that leave you? Now, you would get some pieces back, obviously, if Kevin Durant left. But this is not a good situation for the Brooklyn Nets to lose Kyrie and KD. Whatever you think of the situation, and I know Ben Simmons is there. I don't talk about Ben Simmons until he plays basketball. There's, I'm, just, I'm not doing it. Until I see him on a court playing basketball, it's not even worth mentioning to me. So let's talk about Kyrie and KD. Because even though Kyrie doesn't play a lot of basketball, he plays more than Ben Simmons plays. You can't blow it up if you're the Brooklyn Nets. You're too far in it now. You've already committed. You've already made all these moves. This is the situation. Whether or not they can win a championship together, you have a better chance with them being there than not being there. And you can't afford to lose Kevin Durant. Now, I haven't even really allowed my mind to escape to the conversation of where Kevin Durant would end up. Damian Lillard gave us a little tease over the weekend, which we'll get to later. But I can't even go that far yet. I do think that they sort all this out. But as far as Kevin Durant goes, staying out of the situation, I'm perfectly comfortable with him doing that. It makes sense for him to do that. The KD Kyrie saga, we are going to be watching how this develops over the next couple days. We will get an answer on the 29th about what Kyrie is going to do as far as opting in. But KD was talking about the situation overall and his frustrations. And one of the frustrations that he has is that the front office did not take the time to understand Kyrie. He said, Kevin Durant has not talked to the team. Well, this is a, a report from Logan Murdoch on Kevin Durant's attitude towards the Nets. Kevin Durant has not talked to the team in weeks. I don't think Kevin is confident in the front office right now. His biggest beef is that he feels the front office didn't grow to understand Kyrie, whatever that means. I think KD believes that, hey, you guys didn't understand this guy. You didn't try to figure out where he was coming from. 
That's from The Ringer. So not a direct quote from KD, obviously, but that's just, uh, a report on his attitude towards the situation. Now, I'd have to push back on that. I, I don't know who understands Kyrie. I mean, Kevin Durant obviously feels like he does, but they are friends. I don't even know if Kyrie understands Kyrie. His motivations change quite often, which is why we're in the situation that we're in. Now, the Brooklyn Nets overall are kind of hard for me to point a finger to and blame because I really don't feel strongly about the culture of the Brooklyn Nets or the direction of the Brooklyn Nets or the leadership of the Brooklyn Nets. We obviously talked about what happened during the season with Kyrie Irving and only playing in 29 games. They seem to have drawn a line in the sand by not allowing him to be a part-time player. They went back on that. I get it. It's about winning basketball games. So you want Kyrie Irving to be available when he's available. But it also didn't surprise me because it's Brooklyn. Like, I don't think of anything when I think of the Brooklyn Nets. It's just the players that play there. He also talked about wanting players that are available and committed and all that sounds really good, but Brooklyn is basically a pop-up shop. I can't be mad at temps. I like that. There's nothing con concrete about Brooklyn. There's nothing that when I think of Brooklyn that is, that is lasting or legacy. This is a turnover place, and I don't see KD finishing his career there. Maybe he will, but if he doesn't, 0% surprise. I'm not surprised that this has played out the way it has with Kyrie. You've already lost James Harden. But to blame the run office for not understanding Kyrie, I mean, Kyrie is a very much his own man. Now, I will say there's no excuse for anyone in the league to not have all the intel that you want on someone like a Kyrie Irving who's been in the league as long as he has. It's a very small business. It's just like our business. Everyone knows everyone. Everyone knows everybody's business. If you want to find out how someone is in the building, how they deal with people, how they treat the staff, how they treat coaches, how they treat in-house media, whatever you want to find out, you can find out. So the excuse that you were ignorant to the anarchy that Kyrie Irving can display is nonsense. People not in the league know about that. So there's, there's no way you can plead g ignorance when it comes to that. And to Katie's point about not getting to know him or understand him, maybe there wasn't enough communication between Kyrie Irving and the front office. But again, what is Brooklyn? I can't, this, this is not surprising. If this was the Spurs, if this was Miami, if this was Boston, obviously they didn't appreciate how Kyrie did things. He's not there anymore. There's just organizations around the league, who, Golden State, who have cultures, who have standards, who has leadership that I trust because the results speak for themselves. There's players on the team that don't tolerate certain types of behavior. In those situations, if something went, went wrong, I'm confused. I have questions. Why? How? This is, this is an organization that does things the right way. This is an organization that has standards and leadership and accountability. But Brooklyn, I, I don't, none of this is surprising to, that this is happening. It shouldn't really surprise anyone from any angle. But when you have no standard, when you have no culture, when you're talking about anyone can be the coach before the season even starts, it's hard for me to be outraged that someone didn't understand someone. I mean, this is, this is Kyrie. He is very comfortable with his brand being, I do whatever I want whenever I feel like doing it. It's kind of hard to predict someone like that, especially when you're dealing with a place like Brooklyn that, in my opinion, doesn't really have much culture to build on anyway. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.